resurrection in time. Okay, we got we, we learned in the, the scripture in John in chapter 2 that there is a spiritual growth process. Uh, and you can pretty much see uh, he has, when you get saved, you're a babe in Christ. Amen? Amen. All right. Your babe, what does a babe need? Milk. Milk. And give them the milk of the word, who Jesus is. That's what they need to know. Who saved them? Well, you don't need to know the makeup of the universe. You need to know who Jesus is. Okay, uh, just so you know, who he is is more important than all the science in the world or anything. Uh, that will go away. The heaven and the earth shall pass away. Okay, that means it's going to be gone. Jesus is forever. Amen? Amen. Amen. So that's who you need to know. You need to know Jesus of milk of the word. And then uh, in time, you uh, move up to little children, a toddler. Okay, uh, you're starting to get the learn of things uh, in the Bible. You're starting to get more than just milk. You're starting to get the interactions of people. Okay, uh, you're starting to learn even more. Then something happens. God gives you a choice on things. He said, here's my book. Do you want to believe this? And if you take that one, everything's going to change. If you'll believe, he says, if you'll understand my word and know my word, which one is mine? Uh, uh, if I was to come up here and read like an NIV, uh, you'd probably know it. Anybody here who's been around enough time, uh, learn this book, would turn around and go, whoa, 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 whoa. Why? There's something wrong. There's something wrong. They took out verses. They changed words. They took the blood right out of the book. They take concepts out. They take everything out. Just so you know, uh, I actually, when I first got saved, uh, the first, I did pick up. Somebody handed me one. I said, oh, okay, let me look at this. So I did. I actually read it. I will tell you this. You cannot study one. How do I know? I know. I tried. I actually did it without a commentary, without anybody listening telling me anything, try and study that way. And what you'll find is you cannot. You cannot. <coughs> All the commentaries, they come from this book. Anyone that's any good comes from this book. And if they don't, throw it away. They're worthless anyway. There's things you won't find in a new modern version. <coughs> Number one, you couldn't figure out physical from the spiritual. You can't figure out the kingdom of heaven from the kingdom of God. You can't figure out the Son of Man from the Son of God. You won't ever be able to figure those things out. And I can tell you real easy because it's in the King James. The Son of Man is a, somebody who's born of a, of a person. He was born of a woman. He's got flesh and every Son of Man. It's the Son of Man who died on the cross, right? Mm -hmm. A man dies. It's the Son of God who got up. Amen? Amen? The Son of God looks through the physical eyes. He's on the inside, the Son of God. Hey, look, it's just like you. Larry, that body's getting old, isn't it? It's growing, it's getting old. He's, he's, you know, we're all like used cars, people. You know, as it goes, just get worse and worse and worse as you go. You know, but let me give it to you this way. How about your soul? How's your soul going? Oh, come on, let's get, we're real, come on. <laughs> Okay, Adrian. <laughs> Adrian, how many donkeys? How many donkeys? Two. What's propitiation mean? Oh, I know that too. I wrote it down. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta find it though. I can see it right now. As soon as Adrian gets upstairs and, and she sees the Lord at the judgment seat of Christ, the Lord's gonna turn around and say, uh, Miss Adrian, uh, 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 this work and this work, uh, what did you do in there and how many? She starts yelling, two, I don't care, it's just two. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Propitiation means payment. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Uh, so anyway, let's, uh, let's look at, he said, Propitiation. You need an advocate, and you need, because there's a payment for sin, you need somebody to stand up for you. Who's that? Jesus Christ. Take him as your advocate. Take him as your savior. Take him as the one who stands in for you. When you get be when these people get before God at the very end, you know what he's going to ask for? Where's your lawyer? Where's your advocate? Uh, didn't they all tell you one thing in life? That if you uh, defend yourself in court, you have an idiot for a lawyer? Remember that statement? That's, a, that's the same thing at the great white throne. If you're by yourself... And those people will be, the lost will be. Think about it. They have an idiot for a lawyer. Why don't you get the real lawyer? Why don't you get Jesus Christ? Amen? 
He's going to defend you real well. Amen. All right. So uh, he tells you that. He gave you uh, your spiritual growth uh, section. He, he, he tells you who's going to teach you things. And uh, actually, I was going to start in 23. Let's start in 18. And the Bible says, little children, it is the last time as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come. Even now there are many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out, that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and, know, and ye know all things. I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Father, bless thy word today. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. So uh, he, he says, little children, and look what he says. It is the what? It's the last times. It's the last times. Now, we're coming into the last times of the church age. It's not the last times. It's the last times of the church age. Church age is about to end. It's, a, it's gone through its course. Uh, we know that Christ died. How old was he? 33, 33. what? 33 and a half. 34 years old, okay? He was born, uh, he, if, if we look at the, uh, our English calendar, what? just so you know, when they try and confuse you and say, well, we're off, our calendar's off, you better read this Bible. God sets the times. He's not going to let man set the time. And if you haven't noticed it, it's all around Christ. No man could have came up with all that. He's not smart enough. So what do they say? They say uh, B.C., before Christ, and then Omnio, Domino, the year of the Lord, and all that stuff. I'll take it. And if that's the case, what you're going to find is Jesus Christ then, if it starts at his birth, guess where we go? We go up and we have uh, 33 A.D. He told you to spend two days with the Gentiles. Two days, a day is but how many years? One. One thousand. So you've got two thousand years. 33 A.D., 2033, uh, how, how long is the uh, tribulation? Seven years. Seven years, 33 and a half minus seven. 20, hey, 26, 26, there you go. How close are you? Three years. Pretty close. Getting very, very close. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. You're getting very, very close. One of the things I, I look at is like this. Look at all the 24s in the Bible. Isaiah 24, what's happening in Isaiah, Isaiah 24? The earth's getting turned upside down. What's happening in Matthew 24? The uh, tribulation comes in, and it's, it turns the world upside down. You see all of them. Uh, I, I give you some other things, but I ain't got the time. Things that I've seen in the Bible that deals with 24s and 20s and 24. So it's just something to look at. I, I'm not saying it is, but I'm very, I think it's very close. It's very, very close, people. Amen? Uh, and you can see by the things that are even happening out here. But wait till, wait till we leave and there's no goodness on the earth. There's no church. What you got is you got that mess ruling everything. Think about what they're going to do with nobody holding them back. Amen. It's going to get real, real exceedingly fast. All right. So he says, these are the last times. We're seeing it all around us. And he says that these last times, what's going to happen? Look at verse 18. There are going to be these people coming, and you know what they're called? Antichrist. What's that? They're people, and you look in verse 22, it tells you who they are, that denieth the Father and the Son. Okay? They deny these people. They deny that there's a God in heaven. They deny that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. They deny the virgin birth. Uh, they deny the crucifixion. Uh, they deny these things. You say, I don't hear that. Yes, you do. Just so you know, uh, there has been just been a, a rift. The, uh, now, if you were to go to the Methodist Church and you were to go to the USA Methodist, they do not believe in the virgin birth anymore. They took it off of their doctrinal statement. Now, that's sick, isn't it? Yep. Oh. 
They don't believe that anymore. Isn't that something? What's that tell you? It's the last times. The Bible tells you, it says there, what's the last days? He says it's perilous times. What's that? Your, your, your thinking is a little off. There's a lot of confusion going around. Uh, the confusion is that you're taking your truth from televisions and from people and not from the book. Okay? Put whatever comes down, whatever comes in, whatever the, they say, whatever, who says, I don't know, the news may say, I won't hear it because I'm going to be listening to something else. But I start hearing it from people. Uh, I, my, my first thing to you is, if it doesn't come up your driveway and knock at your door, it's not for you. Right. Amen? Amen. Let them play their silly comic book stuff somewhere else. Amen. It's not for you. Don't get involved and you don't have to worry about it. You say, who didn't? Well, if you haven't looked, people, the Amish are down the block. They're healthier than you. They're happier and joyful than you. You know what they don't have? TV. Internet. That's one of the reasons. Don't think those things are such a great thing. They've caused a lot of problems in our lives. Technology is not always the best thing. We just like it. It seems to be more convenient to us. But it sure has made a drag on our lives. Amen. These are those last Times and uh, let's look at go to Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20, and uh, he's going to tell you what's happening in the last times. He says, uh, uh, Paul's giving a, a speech here, and he, he's leaving them, and he says in verse number 28, 20, 28, he says, Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock over the, over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers. He says to do what? To feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. That's how important God thinks of it. I died for it. I want you to teach it. I want you to feed these people. Okay? Uh, verse number uh, 29. For I know this. I know this, he says. Not I'm thinking. He says that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. There's going to be people that are going to come in, and you know what they're going to do? Try and deceive you. Amen? This is the church we live in today. It happens a lot. Look at the next one. He says, verse 30, Also, also what? Of your own selves. Of your own selves shall men arise. Speaking what? Perverse things. Now, you think they, they're speaking about sexual things or something like that. Uh, perverse. Uh, uh, just so you know, there's a lot that goes with that. There's a lot of preachers that preach perverse things. Why not? They go verse perverse. Verse over here, verse over here, and then what they're doing is they're trying to make sense out of what they have, their pet peeves and what they have inside them. We go scripture by scripture, one after another. Why is that? So you'll understand the scripture. Amen? You get to read it. Hey, look, I could be lying to you. He says there are going to be people that come up amongst you. They're going to, they, they, they always bring out questionable things. And he says to do what? To draw away disciples. That means they're a little better than disciples that are serving. Uh, these guys come in. They have a little bit of knowledge. Uh, I, I usually see them. They usually say to me, uh, what school did you go to? I go to none of them schools. I don't even endorse Bible schools. I tell people straight out, don't go to them. They're sick then. They're, they're terrible. They teach you habits. They teach you ways that you should think. And you ever, anybody here ever play the game Whisper Down the Lane? <laughs> Whisper Down the Lane. Okay, it starts off and you go, okay, there's, a, there's a, a man hiding in a box. By the end, there's purple monkeys and everything else coming out of the door. Because we miss stuff. That's what commentaries are after a while. <laughs> It starts out, 
that it's, uh, you know, I'll, I'll give you one. Sons of God. It started out, it was pretty good. Just worshipers of God came around. Next thing you know, they got UFOs coming into this, fallen angels and everything else. And where'd that come from? Some kind of science fiction novel. Because it's not in the Bible. You should be able to take this Bible, go on a deserted island and know something. That's what, it, that's what I'm talking about. Okay? And let me tell you something. If it doesn't make common sense, everybody here has some common sense. They don't have it out there. Don't worry. It's not going to happen. There's not, there's not going to be a resurgence of common sense in this world. Amen? Amen? But if it doesn't hit the common sense and conscience, which is what God gave you. God gave you common sense and conscience. If it doesn't make con common sense and conscience and it's not in that book, you know what it is? Nonsense. Just a bunch of nonsense. And that's why you have people trying to go to different languages, rolling on the floor, trying to speak in weird things. Why? God ain't speaking to them anymore. Sorry. So now they're just like little children. Little children. How do little children act when they don't get what they want? Amen. And that's what we're seeing in the church houses today, a bunch of hissy fits. A bunch of mess. You stood, you, they don't know any Bible. God gives them 10 minutes of Bible, uh, and it's the message. It's just like, okay, you're a good boy. Get out the door. Nobody learned anything. Come as you are. Leave as you were. Amen. So he said, he's telling you, he says, these are going to be bad times at the end. And he says, in nine, look at 19. These same people, they went out from among us. They were with us. They came from out. They went out. But they were not what? Of us. They were hanging around with us. They were, they were in our crowd, but you know what? They weren't one of us. They didn't believe like us. They, they acted like they did. Okay? Then when you put the book in front of them, they didn't like it. He says, but they were not of us. Watch. For if they had been of us, they, they would no doubt have continued with us. If they would have been of us, if they would have believed like us, they would have continued with us. That doesn't mean they're, oh, we took two guys and now there's one he quit. That doesn't mean that. Some people aren't made out for that. What he's talking about is, uh, is somebody, and you've seen them, they act like they, they, they believe the book. Oh, yeah, the King James is the one. But you'll hear what, what they'll say. And I've, I've heard them a lot in here. They, I'm on, I use only the King James. But you know what? They don't believe that. Look, it's not about that. It's about believing the book, okay? Go to Psalm 119, which is all about the Bible. That is the, that is the psalm that is all about the Bible. You'll notice it's the longest one. It's the, if it was a chapter, it would be the longest chapter in your whole uh, Bible. When anybody says to you in the original Hebrew, original Greek, they're lying to you. That is a good uh, carny hypnotist way of th saying something to get you to believe them. There is no original scripture. Nobody knows where it is. Nobody's ever seen it. Everything down here is a translation. I will prove it with one verse. 119 in Psalm. Go to verse 89. It's the middle verse of this psalm. And that says in 89, Thy word, O Lord, is settled where? In heaven. In that psalm. Where is it settled? In heaven. Well, they're not fighting up there, are they? About it. But what he's trying to tell you, where's the originals? In heaven. Everything down here is just a, just a translation, just like anything else. And I sure don't know what real language God speaks, but I'll tell you this. He's speaking something a lot better than we do. He's much more intelligent. It makes you laugh when people say, they're, oh, I'm speaking in angel's tone. You mean angel goes around going bibbidi-bobbidi-boo? And yubba dubba doo Because if angels are saying that and they're more intelligent than us, you must have some dummy angels. Not to mention, they shouldn't be speaking to you anyway because we don't get messages from angels anymore. That's the Old Testament. We get messages from the Holy Ghost. Does it say inspiration? Amen. Don't put that down, inspiration. That's what's given you a lot of things. And don't believe half of these preachers that say inspiration is only uh, on the scripture and all that stuff. How many of you were inspired to come today? What do you think? That's got, you think that's a devil? Hey, I go to church, you dummy. 
You know, it's God that wants you here, and you feel that way. Uh, what's that? That's the Lord in your life. He's inspired you to do things. He's inspired people to talk to people, to get them saved and everything else. Don't put that past God. He's, believe me, he's incredible. Amen? So, uh, he says, they, they went out with us. They, did, they No doubt they didn't continue with us, so no, no nothing. Uh, but go back to 1 John chapter 2. But he says, but they went out, and he says this, he says, that they might be made Manifest, manifest, made plain, made plain that they were not of us. We knew it then they weren't of us. Now watch what he says in 20. He says, but ye have, what, an unction. You have an unction from the Holy One. Now watch, and ye know all things. Please don't put your chest up in the air and think, yeah, I know everything. <laughs> and ye know all things. He's talking about the things here and stuff. Uh, but... A lot of things like unity. But in verse 20, uh, let us look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. You have an unction from the Holy One. First Corinthians chapter 2. Let's uh, look down and at uh, something Paul says. He says, uh, uh, verse number one, And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of, or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. He's going to give simple preaching so that people can come to Christ. Amen? That's what he's saying. He says, And I was... I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. He's going to show you that as he's weak, the Lord is strong. Verse number four, and my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom. He's not trying to sell you anything, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, powers in the witness and the faith, that your faith, your faith should not stand in the wisdom of who? Man. Uh, not what men say. It's about what God says. But in the power of God, of course. Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect. If, uh, what is perfect? Look, uh, perfect is and I'm sinless. Perfect is my heart is set on God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, yet. Not the wisdom of this world, nor the princes of this world uh, that come to naught. Their stuff is junk. But we speak the, mis the wisdom of the God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Uh, I want you to understand when it says the world, our world, our world, not the earth. The world that we live in now started after the garden. Amen? When they sin, we're in a fallen state, a fallen world. Amen. This is the world we live in. This world will end for us real soon when we get raptured out of here. Amen? Amen. Then they will deal with this world. Amen. Uh, verse number uh, 7. Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world in, unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. They... By, this, by, by, by the world's wisdom, you know not God. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Uh, what he's saying is, if the evil or Satan had known what, what, who he was, if the evil people out there would have known who he was, it's not that they wouldn't have crucified him because he was the king. They wouldn't have crucified him because, guess what? It would have finished God's plan. The idea was not to condemn him. Judas said that in Luke. Uh, seeing he was condemned, what was, what was happening? It went wrong. We wanted to him to bring in the kingdom before the cross. Now, can you get that? Jesus dies on the cross, then he brings in the kingdom in the Old Testament. Okay? If they would have known the cross comes first, psh, they never killed him. They just left him. He has to have a cross before a kingdom. Amen. Back to 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 2. Okay, he says, 
But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us. He doesn't give it to them, the lost. He gives it to us. He says, how does he do it? Look what it says. By an angel? No. By what? By his what? His spirit. That's how he talks to you, by his spirit, okay? He says, I talk to you by the spirit of God, by his spirit, for the spirit searcheth all things. Now watch, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man? You know what a man does. Uh, save the spirit of a man which is inside of you. Each one of us has the spirit of a man in him which is in us. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. You catching on that? You know things because God's spirit is talking to you about God's stuff, godly things. Amen. He says, verse number 12. For we have received not the spirit of the world, <laughs> you get this one, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely, 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 no charge, given to us of God, which things also we speak not of the words which men's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, doing what? Comparing spiritual things with spiritual, not with carnal things. Verse 14. Now watch, this is important. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. It's like telling somebody to get patience and wait on the Lord when they're not even saved. Things are going to get better in your life, just wait on the Lord. I see people saying, man, you're going to wait on the Lord, you know? And I'm sitting there like, God's not even saved. What's he waiting on the Lord for? In fact, to tell you the truth, if he's waiting on the Lord and he's not saved, boy, he'd want to keep that away a little bit, huh? There was a guy on the Titanic when it was going down, and he was running around when they told when they gave the red line. You know what he was saying? He said, women, children, and the unsaved, get in the boats. What? Stay alive. Amen. Amen. So... Uh, verse number uh, verse number 15, he, he doesn't want to get puffed up. Uh, but he that is spiritual, he judgeth what? All things. All things. Not just some things, all things. Yet he himself is judged of no man. Uh, judge not, lest you be judged. No, judge not that ye be not judged. There's no verse in the Bible that says judge not lest ye be judged. That's a street verse or something. Now it's in all the modern versions. No, you'll be judged by what you judge. If you're unsaved, if you're saved, Larry's saved, he goes out and talks to a guy. He tells him about the gospel. You know what the guy says? That's a bunch of nonsense. You know what Larry says in his heart? This man is unsaved. He just judged the man. Well, judge, no, let's be judged. What does he care? He's saved. He's judging you on a matter that he already is. Amen? That's the difference. Amen. Let's go back to um, let's go back to First John. It made manifest, but we have an unction. We have an unction from the Holy One. He speaks to us out of His Spirit. That's the unction that we get from Him. Okay, uh, verse number twenty-one. I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar, but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. Isn't he a liar, huh? He is antichrist that denieth the Father and the sons. He says here, I have I've not written unto you because you know the truth, because you know not the truth. Uh, look, uh, you're saved, and then you can get the Bible. Amen? You can't get it before that. You don't have any light on it. You don't have any illumination on it. You won't get these things. Okay? It's like talking about the tabernacle and you're not saved. It's just a building with some cloth. Get it out of here. These things are silly, they tell you. They won't understand them. Good. Bye. There's your best bet. Now let's look at 20, verse 23 in 1 John. This is a, I'm going to give, I know it has nothing to do with everything here, but I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to give you a little cookie out of this. 
You'll notice in 23 it says, Whosoever denieth the, denieth the Son, watch, the same hath not the Father. And then you have a colon, right? Now you'll notice after that, everything after that is an italicized word, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, italicized words, and I'll tell you what's been said to, to me and everybody else, they weren't in the originals. And, I, and they weren't. So what are they? They were added. Now, some people think they were added by translators. What do you, now look at those words. You think a translator is going to put those words in? No. He could think of that. That reason why I'm bringing that up is because we just talked about it. How did how did they get their how did they get their messages? How did they get their words from the spirit that's inside them from inspiration? Mm -hmm. Look at the word inspiration, people. In inside. S -p S P I R. What's that look like? Spirit. In spirit. In spirit. That's what he's saying. Inspiration is in spirit inside of you that comes out. Just like inhale, bring it in. Exhale, take it out. Amen? You have inspiration, comes from God, comes through your spirit. And then you have expiration. What's that? It goes out to somebody else. That's the difference. Good to learn this book, isn't it? Amen. These are good things. You're not going to learn these things anywhere else. Then pat you on the back. Be a good boy. Let's sing. Amen. So now look at this. Now here's the other thing in here. He has ten words, ten words of the scripture. Now look at the others. You have ten words that are italicized. Ten and ten. I thought that was pretty cool. That's what. See you later, Andy. Tell Denise I said hi. Okay. Now I'm going to show you where this comes in. Go to Jeremiah 20, Jeremiah 36. Jeremiah 36. I've never seen this until uh, years later. Jeremiah 36. It's before Ezekiel. Jeremiah 36 tells you how God writes the Bible. Are we all there? Mm -hmm. Okay, look at the first verse. It says, And it came to pass in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, that this word came unto Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Take thee a roll of a book. Uh, years ago they had a roll. They rolled them. That was the book. He says, You take a roll of a book. And what does he say to Jeremiah? Write therein all the words that I have spoken unto thee against Israel and against Judah and against the nations uh, from the day I spake unto thee, from the days of Josiah, even unto this day. Uh, he's telling him, I want you to write. So what does Jeremiah do? Uh, Jeremiah calls another guy, okay? Uh, look at verse number four. He says, then Jeremiah called Baruch, the son of Neriah, and Baruch wrote, from the mouth of Jeremiah all the words of the Lord which he had spoken unto him in the uh, uh, a roll of a book. So what's happening is Jeremiah gets a roll. He hands it to Baruch. Baruch's got a pen in his hand. Jeremiah's speaking and Baruch is writing it down. We got that? Okay. And he's speaking from inspiration. That guy's putting it down. Now there has to be a, a preservation or whatever. But he gives it to him. He writes all the book that's there. Uh, look at verse 22. He gets the book. They start preaching the book out there to the people. Okay? And uh, it says, uh, now, verse 22, now the king, King Zedekiah, he sat in the winter house in the ninth month, and there was a fire on the hearth burning before him. And it came to pass that when Jehudi had read three or four leaves, he grabs, he cuts it. He cut it with what? A pen knife. He starts slicing it up. Why? He doesn't like it. That's what they do today. What they do. Let's trim it out. I don't like this word. I don't like that word. Let's cut this stuff up. That's what's happening today with God's word. Get it out of here. And, and what does he do? He throws it in the fire, burning before him. Okay, now my question to you is, was that not an original? What happened to it? Well, if God was so interested in originals, why didn't he save that? Because God isn't interested in originals. He's interested in his word. 
So when somebody says the book, when somebody says to you, in the original scripture, in the original language, in the original this, guess what? Liar, liar, pants on fire. Nobody knows the originals. Nobody's seen them. Nobody's checked them. I have never met anybody who grabbed the, grabbed the paper of, a, of any of those originals and sat there and went through it. There's no scientific anything on it. What's that mean? Liar, liar, pants on fire. Yeah, they wouldn't even be able to read them. So he ruins it. What does God say? Uh, look at verse number, uh, we'll look at 32. It says, then took Jeremiah another roll and gave it to Baruch, the scribe. He writes it down, scripture. The son of Neriah, who wrote therein from the mouth of Jeremiah all the words of the book which Jehoiakim, the king of Judah, had burned in the fire. He writes the same thing. Watch this. And there were added besides unto them many what? Like, like words. And there's where you got your italicized. <clears throat> Can you pick up on that now? Amen. It just happened in 1611 this time. Amen. Let's go back and look at the actual words. Whosoever denieth the, denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. You're not saved. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. Jesus said, I and the Father are what? One. If you have the Son, you have the Father. Amen? Amen. Uh, how many people here pray this? Father, I, Father, Father. They always go Father, Father, Father. Why? We pray to the Father in what? Jesus' name. Amen? That's why we have now, he's our father too, through Jesus Christ. You have to realize that. He's your father now. You can cry, Abba, Father. You can do all the things anyone else has done in Israel. Why? He's your father now too. Verse number 24. Let that therefore abide in you. Let that therefore abide in you. What? The Son right there in the word of God uh, which ye have heard from the beginning if that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you ye also shall continue how in the son and in the father and this is the promise that he hath promised us even what eternal life abundant life that's in his word uh, he's given you eternal life okay what does that mean you didn't have it before you have to understand that. You did not have eternal life before. You were not going to live forever before. Now you will uh, live forever. Okay? He's going to give you abundant life. Look at verse 26. These things. You have to have the word, but these things, he says, have I written unto you concerning them that do what? Seduce you. I I'm going to tell you what. This is how it works. Uh, you know, uh, uh, in the Greek and the Hebrew, it really says this, and in this it says this. They're seducing you. What's that mean? That means it like this. If somebody says, now listen to me. I'm just trying to help you out. This is a good picture for you. Okay, there's this mythical book called the originals, amen, that everybody talks about. The original Greek, the original Hebrew, the original this, the original that. Okay? Now, if there's a Hebrew book back here, or some Greek originals, and this guy is up here with this book, and this is the one you have, and he keeps telling you that you need this book for that. Can you read this book? Does anybody here read Hebrew and Greek? Okay, so who becomes the authority? The one that it can explain what this book is about. And who's that guy? That's the guy that thinks he's preaching the scripture to you. What is he? He's a slick, carny hypnotist, and he's seducing you. So you'll turn around and go, well, you know, he's correcting that book. He pretty much knows what he's talking about. Maybe I'll just listen to him. Read the book, people. Read the book. God left it down here. You're responsible for this. You're not responsible for that guy. Amen? Amen. He says, these things I have written unto you concerning them that do what? Seduce you. Okay? Okay? He have a different spirit. He says, but the anointing. Now watch how he's going to change this. He says, but the anointing which ye have received of him. 
Uh, what does that tell you? Every one of you that has been saved, everybody saved? You have received what? The anointing. Every one of you has received that anointing. Stop watching, stop watching Benny Hinn, Joyce Myers, all them others that say they got an anointing. They haven't been anointed with anything. They should just go into sewers for as far as I'm concerned. Amen. Uh, also continue. Uh, where are we at? Uh, verse number, but the anointing, verse 27. That's the Spirit of God, which ye have received of him abide in you. And ye need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you of all things and is truth and is no lie and even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. Okay? Through the teaching of the word of God, you get closer. Okay? Uh, go to Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. Just back a few pages. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 10. Look down at uh, uh, verse number 7. I love this verse. It's also in Psalms 2, in Psalms, excuse me, just not Psalms 2 in the number, but in Psalms. Uh, look down at that verse and it says, Then said I, Lo, I come, now look at the parentheses, in the volume of what book? The book. The book. It didn't say a book, it says the book. There's only one. And he says, it is written of who? Me. Jesus Christ. Everything in this book is about Jesus Christ. Every single thing is about Jesus. It all comes down to Jesus. It's all about Him. He's the most important thing. He was given a name above every other name. It's at the name of Jesus that every tongue shall confess. It's at the name of Jesus, not the Father, not Jehovah, Jesus, not Yeshua, not my, uh, whatever they want to do, Yahweh and all that other junk. Nobody here got saved by somebody called Yeshua or Yahweh or anything else. You got saved by Jesus. Amen? Amen. Stay with it and stop trying to be a, a carnival act. Stay with what was true and what makes sense. Amen? Amen. Don't sensationalize it. He says, you need to get that book. It's written of me. But he says, he says, lo, I come. What's that mean? You want to know more about the Lord? Read the book. Not get on the floor, act like a fish, and start speaking in weird things. That ain't going to bring God in your life. That's going to bring a carnival in your life. And all you're going to have is problems from romper room. Amen. Let's go back to uh, 1 John chapter 2. He wants you to stay close to him. You know the truth. You, as you get taught, you get closer to God. You should be learning about the Lord now. Uh, verse number 28. And now, little children, do what? Abide in him, lest you abide in the true vine. Y you can't do anything. You break the branch of the tree. What happens? That branch dies. You need to stay in, the, stay in that trunk. You need to stay with the Lord. He's the real branch. You need to abide in him. Is what the Bible, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear, and you will see him soon, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. And you have nothing to be ashamed of if you're saved. Amen. Stop being afraid of him coming. Most people are, I'm afraid of him. If he gets his, my hands on me, uh, let me tell you this. Uh, God has is, is much uh, nicer, and, and His mercy is much better than man's. And believe me, if man had his right, he'd regulate everything, and you'd be standing in a line to get a morsel of bread, and you'd starve by the time you got to the front of the line, and guess what? It's your fault. Amen. It says the tender mercies of the wicked are cruel, are cruel. Amen. Uh, verse number... Uh, Verse number 28, and now little children abide in him that 
when we uh, sh when he shall appear we may have confidence and not and not be ashamed before him at his coming if ye know that he is righteous and he is ye know that every one that doeth righteousness is what born of, born of him yeah. everybody here has a spirit inside of them every single one of you you have a soul amen, amen. you have a spirit amen and you have a, a body. You're made like, that's the image of God. Okay? The image of God is a spirit, soul, and a body. Spirit, Holy Ghost. Amen? Soul, the Father. Body, touch, feel, Jesus Christ. Do you get it? Real easy. You're made in the image of God. Mm -hmm. That's the easiest way to look at that. Okay? And he says you're born of spirit. What's that? Well, everybody here has a spirit inside of them, and it's the thing that has made a mess of your life, hasn't it? Mm-hmm. You know that spirit inside. You know when it gets all cramped here and you say things that you shouldn't say. <laughs> you know, you, you take you get that your behavior should change. Now what happens is when God comes in, he comes in with his spirit, and what happens? Your spirit is born again. Now, you have a lot of man in you because you were born as a man, and now you have a fight inside of you. You've got one spirit that's saying, do this, and this is good, this is good, this is what, this is what the Lord wants. Then you've got that other one that says, what? This is what I want. And you are fighting all the time in your life. And it's, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not. Amen? All right, so you're already fighting, and what he says is, you're born, uh, you, you that do righteousness, you're born in him. If you're doing lasciviousness, you're not born of him at that time. You have an old man and a new man in you. The old man, he's, he's the sinner. Amen? Amen? The new man, he's walking with God. He's setting you up for a teaching in chapter 3 when it comes. And, and, and he, this is needed to be there. The reason why is because many people have taken the teaching in chapter 3 and they've messed it up. <coughs> they've totally destroyed it and they think they don't sin anymore. Odd, odd, odd. All right, so uh, is there any questions on this? Pretty good, huh? Pretty easy? Mm -hmm. Amen. All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you. We ask you, Lord, to bless our time here. We ask you, Lord, to bless what we've learned today through your word. Lord, Father, uh, we thank you, Lord, that you've, you've brought wisdom into us, Lord, Father, that we can know thee better. We thank you, Lord, that you give wisdom freely. And, Lord, uh, that's our plea. Lord, give us wisdom. Give it from that scripture we read today. Give us wisdom from it, and we thank you. Let's make sense of it, Lord Father. We thank you in all things. Uh, as every head is bowed, eyes closed, and nobody's looking around, I want to ask you some questions. First question is, are you saved? If you died today, would you be with the Lord? That's a good question to ask yourself. And if you can't say 100% that you're saved, if you don't, you're saying, I hope so, you need to get saved because it's not a hope so religion or faith. It's a no so. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. And you're going to die in your sins if you have that sin. And that's why Jesus died. He paid for your sin so that you can be with him. And he wants you to decide whether you're with him and God or, with, or whether you're with the world and you're going to go to hell. That's your, that's your plea. Are you saved? The Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart how that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Do I have anybody that would just now say, Lord, I'm a sinner and I receive you as my Savior. I'm the liar. I'm the one that did these things and I need you to forgive me of my sins, Lord Father. I'm a sinful man. Maybe there's anybody in here would say, Lord, I'm a sinner, and I receive you as a Savior, just like the thief on the cross. Anybody? Just ask in their heart, pray in their heart, Lord, I'm a sinner, and I receive you as a Savior. Anybody? Father, I thank you, Lord God, for the peace you've given us today, for the happiness we can have in our hearts, Lord Father, for all that we can have from you. We love you, Lord, and we want to serve you, uh, Lord Father, and thank you, Lord, for teaching us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Which threw your hand, Bob? The other one. I walked out of the house the other day and I fell, broke a vessel, went to the post office.